Chapter 9 brings us to foreign exchange markets, the market for foreign currencies. With the economy so global today, virtually every company has some foreign exposure. Whether it's selling or sourcing product or raw materials, we have become a global society. Even firms with only domestic operations face competition from foreign companies. The slide gives an example. A U.S. resort competes with European resorts. If the dollar strengthens against the euro, the cost to come to the U.S. increases, making the European resort more attractive to foreign visitors. Another example, Boeing sells planes to a Brazilian buyer for $15 million when the U.S. dollar is equal to two Brazilian reals, so the cost in reals is $30 million. If the U.S. dollar strengthens to 2.5 reals, the new cost to the buyer is $37.5 million. If the real has not weakened against the euro, the buyer may look to Airbus and pay in euros. Bottom line, even 100% U.S. firms need to understand and be aware of moves in the foreign exchange markets. Foreign trade is facilitated because it's so easy to convert currencies. Looking at 2012 numbers, the U.S. imported $3.3 trillion, exported $3 trillion. When country A's imports exceed their exports, the supply of A's currency will exceed demand in the foreign exchange market. All else equal, the value of A's currency will fall. A weakening dollar can result in inflation. Here's an example. Toyota sells Camrys in the U.S. for $23,000. The exchange rate is 90 yen to the U.S. dollar. So Toyota receives 2,070,000 yen per car. If the U.S. dollar weakens versus the yen, so it's only worth 80 yen to the U.S. dollar, then Toyota will only receive 1,840,000 yen. Toyota would have to raise the price of the Camry in the U.S. to 25875 a 12.5% increase to receive the same amount of yen. With the risk of foreign exchange rates moving against a firm, they need to take steps to hedge their risk. They can use derivatives, coming up in Chapter 10. They can borrow in the same currency in which they're earning, revenue. They can locate facilities where they earn the revenue. Which brings us to the foreign exchange markets, the markets where one currency is exchanged for another. Two markets the spot market for immediate exchange, which is really within two to three days, and the forward market for future exchange. Foreign exchange markets clearly serve to facilitate foreign trade and raising capital in foreign markets. Hedging allows transferring risk, and some traders do speculate in foreign exchange. A foreign exchange rate is nothing more than the cost of one currency in another. Table 9-2, foreign exchange market trading from 1989 to 2016. Trading grew on average 27% a year. Note the shift from spot to forward. Foreign exchange rates are quoted in two ways, direct and indirect. Direct is quoted as the U.S. dollar to the foreign currency. Indirect is the opposite, foreign currency to the U.S. dollar. Examples. Look at the Canadian dollar. The direct rate is $0.7709 U.S. dollars to one Canadian dollar. The indirect rate is 1.2972 Canadian dollars to one U.S. dollar. Note that one is the inverse of the other. This table lists the top currency traders, led by Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase, and UBS. Foreign exchange risk is just the risk that the exchange rate will change against you in a foreign currency transaction. A currency depreciates when a country's currency falls in value relative to other currencies. Example. If the rate on the pound sterling moves from $1.60 to $1.80, then it takes more U.S. dollars to buy a pound sterling. Domestic goods become cheaper to foreign buyers, while foreign goods are more expensive to U.S. buyers. Currency appreciation is the opposite. A country's currency increases in value versus a foreign currency. If the rate on the pound moves from $1.60 to $1.40, it takes less U.S. dollars to buy a pound. Example 9-1 from the text. July 15, 2016. A U.S. firm plans to buy 4 million Swiss francs in one month. Current spot exchange rate is 1 Swiss francs to $1.0175. This is an indirect quote. The U.S. firm fears rates will move against them, so they decide to buy Swiss francs now at the spot rate. 3 million Swiss francs is $3,052,500. One month later, the deal falls through, and the U.S. firm needs to convert the Swiss francs back 
to U.S. dollars. The spot rate is now one Swiss franc is a dollar point oh oh five. The Swiss franc is depreciated versus the U.S. dollar. Converting back equals three million fifteen thousand dollars. So the U.S. firm has lost thirty seven five hundred in the transaction. The U.S. firm could have used a forward contract to hedge. The spot rate was one Swiss franc to one point oh one seven five dollars. The one month forward rate one Swiss franc to 1.0193. Suppose on July 15th they bought 3 million Swiss francs at the spot rate, 3,052,500, and sold 3 million Swiss francs at the one month forward rate, 3,057,900. Net profit, $5,400. This only works if the U.S. firm doesn't need the 3 million Swiss francs in one month. Example 9. Two from the text demonstrates the return on foreign exchange transactions. This is the balance sheet of the firm. Assets, the investing side, liabilities, the borrowing side. The maturity and duration are matched at one year, but the currency composition is not. The firm is raising all of its $162.25 million in liabilities in dollars, one-year CDs, but is investing 50% in one-year U.S. dollar assets, 50% in one-year UK loans in pounds. The appropriate rates are shown. The rates are repeated. At the beginning of the year, the firm sells 81.25 million for pounds on the spot currency market. At an exchange rate of $1.30 to the pound, that equates to 62.5 million pounds. And it loans those pounds for one year in the UK at 15%. At the end of the year, the pound revenue from the UK loans will be 71 million 875,000 pounds. The firm repatriates these funds back to the U.S. at the $1.30 rate equal to $93,437,500. The exchange rate did not change over the year, so the firm profits by 4%. But suppose the exchange rate does change from $1.30 to the pound to $1.18 by year end. The pound depreciates versus the dollar since it takes less U.S. dollars to buy one pound sterling. Same beginning transaction, year end, the income on the UK loan is the same, but converting back to the US dollar is now 84812500 The results, a net loss of 1.31%. Going the other way, suppose the pound appreciates versus the dollar. Same beginning of the year, income on the UK loan is the same, but converting back to the dollar is now 100625000 now the net profit is 8.42 percent. Let's take a look at the history of foreign exchange. Most markets operated under the gold standard through the 1800s. The United Kingdom was the dominant international trader until World War II, and that caused them to deplete their gold reserves. In 1944, the Bretton Woods Agreement fixed exchange rates within 1 percent bands. This called for the exchange rate of one currency for another to be fixed within this band. But this caused some currencies to be overvalued, some undervalued. In 1971, the Smithsonian Agreement increased the bands to two and a quarter percent. 1973, the Smithsonian Agreement eliminated the rate boundaries, allowing free-floating exchange rates. This in introduced what's called managed float. In discussing the FOMC, we mentioned that some countries use procedures similar to our open market activities to manage their exchange rate. That's managed float. Foreign exchange markets are the largest financial markets in the world. Prior to 1972, banks were the only channel for trade. Now, foreign exchange trading goes on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Electronic trading is extensive, and 90% of the contracts end in delivery. London has, for a long time, been the largest center for foreign exchange trading, and it still is, with New York in second place, Singapore in third. Foreign exchange involves both spot and forward transactions. Spot, meeting immediate at the current exchange rates, usually deliveries actually in two to three days. Forward contracts are for the future exchange of currencies. They're customized as to both amount and date. Again, we'll look at the two ways exchange rates are quoted, direct and indirect. Direct is quoted as the U.S. dollar to one unit of the foreign currency, quoted in U.S. dollars. Indirect is the opposite. Same examples as before, the Canadian dollar. The direct rate is 0.7709 U.S. dollars to one Canadian dollar. Indirect, 
1.2972 Canadian dollars to the U.S. dollar. Note that one is the inverse of the other. The indirect rate of 1.2972 is 1 divided by the direct rate. A huge change came in foreign exchange with the introduction of the euro, the European currency. The European community was formed in 1967, combining three smaller communities. In 1993, the Maastricht Treaty started the change to the euro, and this created the European Central Bank to oversee the integrated system. The euro is the official currency of the European Union. Euro notes and coins began circulating on January the 1st, 2002, and as you can see on the slide, they are very colorful. The EU has 27 members, but as of now, 19 have replaced their currency with the euro. Austria, Finland, Portugal, Slovenia, Latvia, Luxembourg, France, Greece, Italy, Belgium, Estonia, the Netherlands, Slovakia, Spain, Lithuania, Malta, Germany, Ireland, and Cyprus. Denmark is an EU member but had opted out of adopting the euro. There's seven countries that will join once they've met the EU's convergence criteria, which was outlined in the Maastricht Treaty. Bulgaria, Croatia, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, Romania, and Sweden. Note who is not on any of these lists, the United Kingdom. The U.S. dollar has fluctuated versus the euro during the 2000s. Interest rate differentials are a major factor in these swings. Currently, the U.S. dollar buys 0.86 euro. The U.S. dollar has always been the reserve currency of many countries, but Russia and China have replaced some of theirs with euros. As of the first quarter of 2020, the U.S. dollar is still the primary reserve currency with the euro in second place, with about third of as much. In 2016, 43.8% of foreign exchange transactions were in the U.S. dollar versus 15.6% in euros. According to Traders Magazine in 2019, the U.S. dollar was on the side of 88% of all trades. The yuan, or the renminbi, is the official currency of the People's Republic of China. The yuan has historically been pegged to the U.S. dollar, but early in this century, China was pressured to allow the yuan to free float. Cheap Chinese exports were hurting manufacturing in other countries. As the slide says, the yuan was pegged to either the U.S. dollar or the euro from 2001 to 2005 and 2008 to 2010. China has always been very protective of their currency. In 2009, Hong Kong was, for the first time, allowed to trade the yuan offshore. Moving on with the yuan. In January 2011, China opened the yuan more to international usage, even allowing the U.S. to trade the yuan. October 2011, foreign companies could settle accounts on mainland China in the yuan. February 2013, a big step. The CME Group began trading yuan futures in Chicago. November 2015, the International Monetary Fund designated the Chinese yuan as an accepted reserve currency, joining the U.S. dollar, the Japanese yen, the pound sterling, and the euro. During the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009, the U.S. dollar increased in value against most major currencies as investors worldwide sought safe havens in the United States treasuries. In 2009, the U.S. dollar began to fall as investors were looking for higher yields. From 2010 on, the U.S. dollar tended up, even as the U.S.'s credit rating was downgraded. Let's talk in a bit more detail about foreign exchange risk, the risk of changes in exchange rates. Anytime you're involved in any type of transaction that involves foreign currency, there's risk. If a U.S. firm makes an investment in a foreign country, they can convert U.S. dollars to the foreign currency, invest it in the foreign country, and then repatriate the earnings at the spot rate. Wiser firms engaged in foreign transactions to hedge in some way. On-balance sheet hedging means matching foreign assets and liabilities. Off-balance sheet hedging means using forward contracts, and we'll look at examples of both. Example 9-3, and this is posted as an Excel file. This is the balance sheet of the firm we'll use for example 9-3, and these are the base rates. The U.S. one-year CD rate, 8%. The U.S. one-year default-free loan rate, 9%. The U.K. risk-free rate, 15%. The U.K. pound sterling CD rate, 11%. Here's an example of on-balance sheet hedging. Example 9-3. 
The base data is from the previous slide plus the beginning of year and end of year exchange rates. The exchange rate at the beginning of the year is $1.30 to the pound. Exchange rate at the end, $1.18 to the pound. So the pound depreciates versus the dollar. Less dollars to buy a pound. At the beginning of the year, borrow $81.25 million in pounds at 11%. At the $1.30 exchange rate, this is 62.5 million pounds. At the end of the year, repay the CD loan is 69.375 million pounds and convert back to the U.S., 81,862,500. dollars Also at the beginning of the year, you convert $81.25 million to pounds and loan the pounds in the U.K. at 15%. At year end, you collect the income on the U.K. loan, 71875 and convert it back to the U.S. dollars, 84812500. dollars The return on the U.K. investment, 4.385. Return on U.S., 9 Average return, 6.692. Rate paid on the UK loan, 0.754. Rate paid on the CDs, 8%. Average rate paid, 4.377. Profit or loss spread, you made a profit of 2.315%. The given data is shown at the top again. The base data from the previous slide, plus beginning and ending exchange rates. In this case, the end of year rate goes up to $1.40 to the pound. At the beginning of the year, borrow $100 million in pounds at 11% at the $1.30 exchange rate, this is 62,500,000 pounds. At the end of the year, repay the CD loan, 69,375,000 pounds, and convert it back to dollars, 97,125. Also at the beginning of the year, you convert 81.25 million to pounds and loan those in the UK at 15%. At year end, you collect the income on the UK loan, 71875000 and convert back to the U.S. dollar, 100625000 The return on everything is shown right there. Profit or loss spread, 2.654%. Example 9.4 starts with almost the same balance sheet, but all liabilities are in U.S. CDs. In this example, the pound depreciates versus the U.S. dollar. It takes less dollars to buy a pound. Continuing with example 9.4, this begins very much like 9.3 by converting 81.25 million to pounds and loaning them at the 15% UK rate. The income on this loan is the same as in 9.3, 71,875,000, but converted back to US dollars at the lower rate, $89,843,750. At the beginning of the year, the firm also sells the expected pound interest in principle forward. So at year end, the forward contract is delivered and the proceeds converted back to dollars at the lower rate, $97,656,250. Recapping, profit or loss, made a profit, 1.788%. A firm evaluates its foreign exchange position using the formula shown on the slide. This would be assessed for a specific currency, I. Foreign exchange assets minus foreign exchange liabilities equal net foreign assets. Foreign exchange bought minus foreign exchange sold, net foreign exchange bought. Net foreign assets plus net foreign exchange bought equals net position. A net long position is wholly more assets than liabilities in a specific currency. Net short is the opposite. Table 9-4 details foreign exchange exposure from 1993 to March 2016. All categories have grown significantly. A financial institution may take positions in foreign exchange markets for a variety of reasons. To support a customer's international trade needs, customer investments, customer's hedging, speculation for their own account. The purchasing power parity theory states that changes in foreign exchange rates are related to inflation rates in each country. The formula is shown and we'll go through some examples. Note the variable designations. U.S. is the United States. S. is the foreign currency. Assuming the rates of interest are equal, this formula should hold. The difference between the interest rate in the U.S. and the foreign rate should equal the difference in inflation in the two countries. As stated, the change in the exchange rate between two countries is proportional to the difference in their inflation rates. Here's example 9-5, purchasing power parity. The given data. 
the U.S. dollar to the ruble, 1.7 cents. Russian inflation, 7.5%. U.S. inflation, 0.8%. Using the formula from the previous slide and plugging in the variables, we find the change should equal 0 0.001139. Adding that to the original exchange rate yields a revised rate of 0 0.01586. We've seen the Fisher effect before in a domestic setting. This is the international Fisher effect. The implications are the country with the higher nominal interest rate will tend to see its currency depreciate. The country with the lower nominal interest rate will see its currency appreciate. Finally, we have interest rate parity. This theorizes that the domestic interest rate should be related to the foreign interest rate, the current spot exchange rate, and the forward exchange rate. Using the British pound sterling as an example to see the formula set up, and we'll go through examples on the following slides. This is example 9-6. Suppose on July 15, 2016, a U.S. citizen has excess funds available to invest in either the U.S. or British bank time deposits one month investment horizon and both options are default risk free. The rates are shown on the slide. Using the interest rate parity formula and filling in the given data, we find the U.S. one month rate should be 0 0.5305. Using the interest rate parity formula, this time we're looking for the U.S. to the pound forward rate. Given the U.S. rate is 9%, U.K. rate 11%, U.S. dollar to the pound spot rate $1.60. What should the forward rate be? Substituting the given data in the formula, we find the forward rate should be $1.5712. Continuing of interest rate parity, suppose the given conditions exist. The U.S. rate is 9%, the U.K. rate is 11%, the U.S. dollar to the pound rate is $1.60. What if the forward rate is $1.55? Borrow pounds in the United Kingdom at 11%. Sell them in the spot market for $1.60 to the pound and invest in the U.S. at 9%. Buy 1.11 pounds owed at the forward rate of $1.55 a pound. The cost will be $1.7205. Net gain, $0.0235 per pound borrowed. This recaps the example from the previous slide using 100 pounds. And this ends Chapter 9.